Well, it began in Anaheim, California, where over the weekend, hundreds of protesters took to the streets in response to a wave of police brutality there. No justice, no peace. It's our the police. This was actually the ninth consecutive day of protests against police, initially sparked after the shooting deaths by police of two men, 25-year-old Manuel Diaz and another man, Joel Acevedo. They say police targeted them because of their race and where they live and have been calling for systemic change ever since. Nine people were arrested in those demonstrations yesterday. And to talk more about all of this, I'm joined by community organizer Ron Gochez. Uh, Ron, I uh, just want to get a sense from you. I'm not sure if you saw the protest, if you were there, or, or saw some of the footage on TV. Uh, what do you think this was about? Yeah, we've been in the streets of, of Anaheim. And what this is about, uh, this is not just about the killing of these two men. This is about generations of repression and of violence on behalf of the Anaheim Police Department against the people of Anaheim, and in particular, uh, Latinos in Anaheim. So I think the, the frustration finally, it blew over, people came out, uh, and, and you're seeing that anger uh, against what's happening, against the treatment that our community is facing. So I'm not surprised by this, and I think that if we don't, if we don't have some real justice uh, for the cops who killed these two men in the last uh, week, uh, you know, I think this violence may continue in Anaheim. We're not calling for violence, but we understand the community is outraged at what's happening, and sometimes it just cannot be contained. And I know that this protest took place, it was a march to Disneyland. Talk a little bit about um, why Disneyland and what the significance of that is. Well, just yesterday, there was three different protests all over Anaheim, at the City Hall, in front of the Anaheim Police Department, and at Anaheim, I'm sorry, and at Disneyland. The reason why they went to Disneyland, because obviously Disneyland is an internationally recognized place. Uh, it brings in, you know, millions of dollars to the city. And, and a lot of people believe it really runs the, the, the politics and the police department of Anaheim. So people wanted to go so that all of the tourists, all the people coming from all over the world to Anaheim, to Disneyland, can see that just outside of the doors of Disneyland, you know, the people do not think it's the happiest place on earth. There's a lot of violence against poor people in Anaheim, and it needs to be called out. So I think that's why some of the organizations decided to do uh, go to Disneyland, just to expose everyone to the realities of Anaheim. And I know our correspondent Ramon Galindo was actually at the protest as well this weekend uh, and spoke to a few of the people there. I want to hear from uh, one of those protesters. Do we have... After Manuel Diaz's shooting and Joel's shooting, Literally a couple of days after, um, the DA finally contacted my mom, and she basically said there's no video surveillance. There never was a video surveillance. You know, we have witnesses say that they actually, the police went on the roof, and they got the camera. That was one of the most interesting things, Ron. I mean, uh, we heard from, from witnesses here who say police were actually coming to their doors trying to purchase cell phone video from them. Um, talk a little bit about these specific shootings. Yeah, the local media here in Los Angeles reported that at least four different people were offered cash on the spot by officers of the Anaheim Police Department because obviously they didn't want this footage to go viral. Uh, so these shootings, like I said, you know, they're, they're part of a systematic problem in Anaheim. Just this year alone, there's been eight uh, killings by the Anaheim Police Department, most of those of people who are unarmed, uh, like what just happened in this last week. So the people are, are tired. This is not something, this is not one, uh, one case. This is really a systematic problem that's been happening for generations in Anaheim, uh, in a city where more than half of the population there is Latino. 53% of the population is Latino. They don't have any political representation, and they feel that the police department really uh, use, you know, racial profiling and brutality against them. So that's why that you saw the community, I mean, mothers, well, you know, with strollers, all kinds of people from the community coming out. These aren't even activists. They're just people who are completely fed up with the treatment that they receive from the police. And in response, we now see the famous video where the police, you know, sick dogs on people. They shot them with rubber bullets. These are women and children who were not activists. They weren't anarchists. They weren't people who were trying to cause problems. They were simply just denouncing what the brutality that the police use against uh, their people and their community. And Ron, as you say, and as so many protesters ha have said to us, uh, this is a systemic problem. A and uh, a lot of them blame racism. They blame, um, you know, flaws in the system. Uh, I guess I'm curious what specifically people are calling for and also you know if as you say this has been uh, a problem for so long uh, why they think things will change now i think most immediately that we need to see justice we need to see that uh, the man who shot 
uh, these, these young uh, Mexicans here in Anaheim, they need to be brought to justice. They need to be charged with murder. And that's why here locally in Los Angeles today, uh, there, there was a big press conference to demand that, uh, that Kamala Harris, which is the Attorney General of California, that she bring about uh, an investigation into these murders. Not only that, obviously it's painfully, painfully obvious that the, the officers of the Anaheim Police Department need some, some training so that they don't, you know, shoot first and ask questions later. This is something that's been going on for way too long. So those are the things that need to happen so that there can be some changes in the community. How can the community feel protected and go to the police for help if they feel that they're going to be yet one more victim of the police department? So uh, Anaheim is not, you know, uh, just one, it, that's just one case. But we see this happening all over the country. That's why even though we're in Los Angeles, uh, we're going to Anaheim to support our brothers and sisters there who are trying to organize themselves to defend themselves, unfortunately, from the police. Ron, when you read about these incidents in, in much of the mainstream media, you read about people provoking police before they were shot. Uh, you read that they were gang members, that they were not cooperating. But witnesses tell, when, you know, when the witnesses do talk, they tell a very different story. They say, uh, well, at least one of the vi victims might have been running. He wasn't provoking anything. I guess what I'm suggesting here is there seem to be some major discrepancies between what witnesses are saying and uh, what police are telling some of the media. That, you know, this is, it's always happened throughout history. We see that uh, when, when someone gets killed, particularly a person of color, you know, the police says that they were either armed or they, were, they felt threatened in some way. But like you said, the, the community sees a very different story. You know, in the case of Manuel Diaz, there was absolutely no crime reported in the area. It was simply a case of uh, three young men who saw a police officer, and given the relationship that we have with the police in our communities, they felt fear, so they ran away. And now we know that there's all kinds of evidence that, that he was shot in the back of the head, meaning he was running away from the police officers. He, he did not pose any kind of a threat to the officers, but yet he still received a bullet in the back of his head. I mean, that speaks to how much they care about the safety of our community. And then afterwards, when the people came out to protest, they shot rubber bullets, which they say are non-lethal, but if one of those rubber bullets would have hit a child in the head, that child would have died. You know, and when they sick dogs in our community, they say it was a mistake, but it wasn't a mistake. These dogs are extremely trained. Well, you know, we're showing that video. In order to stop, they won't. We're showing that video right now while you're speaking, Ron, a uh, video of that dog that was accidentally released, as police say, that, that attacked that man. Uh, we heard from the woman who had, uh, you know, was holding her baby when those dogs were released. They came at her first. Uh, the video aspect, I think, will help in the future. Uh, police can deny all they want or paint the picture uh, that they want to paint, but the fact is when you have stuff on camera, uh, the media are going to be forced to, to have to look into what actually happened here. Uh, appreciate you weighing in with us, Ron. Uh, I know you're always out there on the scene, whatever seems to be happening there, and you have a good perspective to give us community organizer Ron Gochez.